Hello, my name is Kishwani. S K E S H W A N I Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for T's. We have been solving T's math problems out of this book here, the T's Official Study Guide, 2021. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today we'll pick up from where we left off on day number 32 from page number 178. Please turn to it, page 178. On page 178, we deal with three concepts. Concept of an expression, an equation, and an inequality. Expressions, equations, and inequalities. Let's go through them. It's a very straightforward, simple concept. For example, something like this. 9 minus 2y. This is what you will find on top of the page, page number 178. Always make sure the book is in front of you. It makes it easy. It makes life easier. On top of page 178, they talk about three examples, which is what I'm going through right now. 9 minus 2y is just an expression. Once we introduce an equal sign, once we introduce an equal sign, now it is about to become an equation. It is not an equation yet. What it is right now in this form is a nonsense because it has an equal sign, but it doesn't tell you what is it equal to. Once we introduce an equal sign, we have to have something on the other side. Now we are told that this quantity 9 minus 2y equals something else is an equation. We could have had the exact same thing. We could have had the exact same thing, 9 minus 2y on one side and 27 on the other side, but instead of an equation, now we are told that this side, 9 minus 2y, is less than 27. It doesn't matter whether it's less than or more than, the fact that it is this side is no longer this side is no longer equal to that side, it is an inequality. These two sides are not equal, they are unequal. It is an inequality. Here is another simple example. For example, you may simply have minus x, just minus x, nothing else. That's an expression. On the other hand, if we are told that uh, x is less equal to 8, that's an equation. It's a very simple, straightforward equation. Or we may be told that x is less than 8. That's, that's an inequality. That's an inequality. In the book they have minus z. It makes no difference, but since they have minus z, I'm going to change it. I don't know why. They switched the variable, but that's what you find in the book. Let's do one more. So that was number one. Number two on the top of the page, and number three now. Here we are told minus 3 times x minus 12. And that's it. Nothing else. That's an expression. Once we write the same exact thing, we say equal to, say, 2 times 3x plus 15. Now it becomes an equation. Now it becomes an equation. We could have the, we could have the same exact thing, minus 3 x minus 12 is greater than or equal to 2 times 3x plus 15. It's an equation now. This is an equation. This is an equality. What you will find is that if you want to solve this thing, solving this thing or that thing is the exact same thing. Nothing changes. The steps are all the same. Except there is one minor exception. We'll get to that when we, when we cross. We'll cross that bridge when we get to that. Right now, it's very straightforward. If you want it, we can very quickly solve it. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 12 is positive 36. Equals 2 times 3 is 6x. 2 times 15 is 30. Now we, we need to bring the x's on one side y, uh, and numbers on one side. We have a negative 3x here. Why don't we add 3x to both sides? The negative 3x is going to cross out the positive 3x. 36 comes down. And here we have, oh well actually we should, we should subtract the 30 from here also. Let's subtract 30 at the same time, so that we don't have to do it in two steps. So 36 minus 30 is just 6, and this is 9x. Let's divide both sides by 9. If we divide both sides by 9, we find that x is equal to 6 over 9, which is 2 thirds. That's all. And what you'll find is that if, if instead of, if instead of, If instead of equal sign, if we had instead of equal sign, if we had inequality, 
it will not change anything. It will still be the same exact step. It will still be the same exact steps. So we are told that two third, here it says, two third is greater than or equal to x, which is same as saying, which is same as saying that x is less than two third. We usually don't say that two third is more than x, which says x is less than two third. That's the solution. There was the top of the page. At the bottom of the page, we are given two word problems, two word problems dealing with inequalities. Let's go through those as well. And after I, after I finish writing the problems, if you want to solve them on your own, it's always a good idea. Just pause the video. Solve it yourself and see what you come up with. So, first one says, let's call it A. It says Xavier attends, attends, it's, that's an E, not attends, a fair. This person Xavier goes to the fairground and he attends a fair. He spends $25 total, which includes $5 for admission. Apparently there is an admission fee of $5, so this person spends $25 total, of which $5 were spent simply on being admitted for the admission fee. Then he begins to write, then he begins to, to write the rights. He wrote eight rights. Question simply is, what's the price of each ride? Let's think logically. How much did we spend? We spent a total of $25. He wrote eight rights. And let's use P to represent the price. This thing, price of each ride, let's call it P. P for price. Let's use the letter P to represent the price of each ride. And since he wrote eight of them, and for each of them he paid P dollars, eight times P must represent the amount of, amount of money that he spent on the rides because he wrote eight of them. Plus he spent all the five dollars for the admission. And now we know the total amount that was spent was twenty-five dollars. The simple equation is what we have to solve. That's all. Let's subtract five from both sides. 5 is going to go away, 8p comes down, this becomes 20, therefore p is 20 over 5, 20 over 5, 20 over 8, there we go, 20 over 8, and whatever that works out to be. Let's divide top and bottom by 2, we divide top and bottom by 2, we get 10 over 4, and think of this in terms of money. $10 divided equally among four people, that's going to give us two and a half dollars. So the price of each ride must have been two dollars and fifty cents, two and a half dollars. Let's do the next one. Next one. Next one is that we are about to do deals with inequalities. This was the equality, it's an equation. Next one we're going to deal with inequalities. It says, you want to spend, wants to spend, no more than seventy dollars. There you go, that's our cue that we, we are about to deal with an inequality. We can spend up to seventy dollars, but no more than that. In other words, total amount of spending that we're going to do has to be either less than or equal to 70. It can be equal to 70. So it says no more than, which means it can be equal to 70. We are further told that the person needs needs $45 to buy essentials. Let's go on. But, but he wants to buy one item which is not an essential, he wants to buy pepperoni, which costs
cost two dollars fifty cents per pound. By the way, that's a misprint in the book. In the in the book it says seven fifty. That's a misprint. It's not a seven fifty. It's two fifty. Now, just because it says it says forty nine, doesn't mean that you have to be a robot, a puppet, and actually work with seven fifty, seven forty nine. Or whether it's whether it's whether it's whether it is seven forty nine or two forty nine, convert it to fifty. Nothing is going to happen. Nobody's going to come and arrest you. So let's continue. Let's do it on this side. So the question simply is: Given these facts, given these facts, the fact that he uh, he can spend no more than seventy dollars. The fact that of the seventy dollars he has to spend forty-five dollars just to buy the essential, he also wants to buy pepperoni. How many pounds can he buy with the rest of the money? Given the fact that he's going to, the pepperoni costs two dollars and fifty cents per pound. Let's find out, shall we? So we're going to buy p pounds. We're going to buy. Let p represents number of pounds bought. We must, we must understand the variables that is being used in any given situation. Very first thing we need to understand is what does this variable represent in the context. In the previous example, we used P to represent the price, in which case it would have been a dollar amount. It would have been money, because it represented price. Here, we are using the same letter P, which is okay to use the same letter, because we are no longer dealing with the same problem. In the same problem, we cannot use the same letter to represent two different things, obviously. But in a different problem, in a different story, we can use the same letter. Here we're using P to represent the number of pounds that we're going to buy. It no longer represents the money, it represents the number of pounds. And we know that each pound costs 250. So if you find if you buy P pounds and each costs 250, 250 times P is the amount of money that you're going to spend on pepperoni. We also have to buy essential, which we are told. $45, which we are told is going to cost us $45. So the $45 that we're going to spend on the essential plus the amount of money that we're going to spend on pepperoni has to be less than less than $70, less than or equal to. Has to be less than or equal to $70, or if you like, has to be no more than $70. The amount of money that we're going to spend on essential plus the amount of money that we're about to spend on pepperoni, that total, that grand sum, has to be no more than $70 or less than or equal to 70, same thing. Now we solve for it. Now we solve for it just like you would solve for solve an equation. Let's subtract 45 from both sides. 250 times P is going to come down. And this less than or equal to sign is going to come down. This 45 cancels out. 0 minus 3, 0 minus 5 is 5. 6 minus 4 is 2. There you go. 25. If you divide by 2.5, this 250 is actually 2.5. If you divide both sides by 2.5, you will find that P has to be less than 25 over 2.5. And if you don't know how to do that, just multiply top and bottom by 10 so to get rid of this 2.5. And if you multiply top and bottom by 10, you can get rid of this 2.5. And on the top, we end up with 25 times 10. And on the bottom, we end up with just 25. Very good. In other words, the the, uh, the pound of pepperoni that he can buy has to be less than or equal to 10. He can buy up to, up to 10 pounds of pepperoni, which makes perfect sense because even if you did buy 10 pounds of pepperoni and each pound costs 250, 10 pounds is going to cost us $25, leaving us the $45 that we need to buy the essential out of our total amount of $70. We'll meet again tomorrow and we'll do the problems that you see there on the next page which says chapter 29 practice problem. There are five of those and we're going to take care of all five of those tomorrow. And that will be the end of chapter number 29. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow. In the meantime, in the meantime, if you would, if you would like to work with me, if you would like to hire me as your tutor to get you ready for the exam, uh, you can reach me by sending me an email. Just go to my website at kishwaniprep.com. Kishwani Send me an email or fill out the form over there and I'll be more than happy to talk to you. All right. Also, if you want some extra practice, there's another series of videos on my channel which deals with the T 
Peace 5, which is an old book, is the same exam, just an old book, or, or older edition. Math is math, math does not change. There are 80 videos in that series. Watch those all 80 videos and it will give you even more practice. Right. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.